I'm having a rough time. I'm having a rough time. Thank God I got my coffee in a to-go cup because I thought I was going to sit in a cafe and read The Raven King, start The Raven King. And I read the prologue and I was like, I need to be alone for this one. Hi everyone. So you're here. You saw the thumbnail, you read the title, you know why we're here today. I'm more nervous about this video than many videos I have made because I have so many friends that the Raven Cycle is their personality. The characters are their friends. I know them. Like, I know the characters' names because I have heard them talked about in conversation as if they were real people. <laughs> I'm nervous. So, um, yeah, today, in case you somehow just clicked upon this, I'm going to be reading The Raven Cycle. This is a cult classic, and I need to make a confession. I have read the first book. So, backstory about me. I've been a reader my entire life. Uh, my mom is a librarian. It was not a choice. <laughs> and then in university, because I had university and multiple jobs, I just did not have the time, the energy, the capacity to read um, anything other than like school texts or like I, I read a lot of short stories. That was kind of my short story, lit fic, short book era. But I have always, always been a fantasy girl. College and then the years kind of right after graduation when I had my full-time job, I wasn't reading. And then I accidentally read Six of Crows and my life just exploded and that's the reason why I even made a YouTube is because I needed to talk to someone about it and I watched a with Cindy video and I was just like oh my god I can just talk about books even though I'm I've I make YouTube videos I, I never really watched a lot of YouTube so I missed out on like the golden age of booktube and all this stuff this was all brand new to me even before I started vlogging I didn't really watch vlogs so it was like booktube in 2020 what is this so I started from there and I had missed so much and so I just got so many great recommendations and I was eating stuff up. One of the books that was obviously recommended to me if I liked fantasy series was The Raven Cycle and I gave it a try. I'm gonna try and find a clip of me actually talking about it but I might give it another go but from what I've read I'm gonna put Ronan in deserve better because he didn't show me too much like really bad boy behavior. It's just like a troubled teen who has a pet bird. I don't remember the plot. I remember a spoiler but I don't really remember the spoiler. Like I think I do but maybe I'm just spoiling myself. Like I, it's gonna be a twist of a twist because I don't remember correctly. Um, so I do think I remember something. I also will say I, the thing I remember, the thing that sticks out of, of the entire book that has changed so many people I know, has changed their lives. The detail I remember is that one of the characters drives a BMW and I don't know why, but I just have a immediate distrust and dislike of someone who drives a BMW. So so, but I know that he's he's beloved and misunderstood and maybe I'm judging too quickly, but that's literally the BMW is what stuck with me. And then the potential twist that I might be mis misremembering. So that's what I'm going into. Let me read to you Goodreads. I don't know, whatever the summary. Let's do The Raven boys. Hi there, before we get any further into changing my life, because yes, I come from the future and I am a different person <laughs> from the person who started this video, um, I would like to give a shout out to the sponsor, which is Endel. Endel is an app which is an AI powered and neuroscience backed system that helps you relax, focus, and sleep. So they basically studied how sound affects our brains, which we know it does, and they have created a ton of different soundscapes to help you with relaxation, focus, and sleep. The AI power behind it actually takes into account where you are when you share your location, so in terms of what time it is, what's the weather, so that it can really customize whatever you are trying to use it for. I have found actually that the focus really does help me. I've had a lot of questions about how do I read uninterrupted for such a long period of time? How can I like 
actually focus on reading. And I would highly recommend you give this tool a try. They also give you a lot of control. They have a bunch of nature sounds and you're able to control kind of what your personal mix is. Do you like it? rainy but with a little like morning bird song you can also fall asleep to it and it checks your like circadian rhythm and really tries to put you naturally into a deep restful sleep the first 100 people to download the app through the link down below or the qr code right here will get one week free of using the service so info will be down below but hopefully that helps you out okay thank you so much for sponsoring this endal and Let's get back to our boys. The Raven Boys, this has oh, 353,000 ratings. I'm rounding up, but only by 20. It has almost 40,000 reviews and it has a solid 4.05 rating. This came out in 2012, it's 400 pages, italics. There are only two reasons a non-seer would see a spirit on St. Mark's Eve, Neve said. Either you're his true love, or you killed him. Um, also, she spells Neve, N-E-E-V-E. -E -E. Okay. It's freezing in the churchyard, even before the dead arrive. Every year, Blue Sergeant stands next to her clairvoyant mother as the soon-to-be-dead walk past. Blue herself never sees them, not until this year when a boy emerges from the dark and speaks directly to her. His name is Gansey, and Blue soon discovers that he is a rich student at Agliabai, a local private school. Blue has a policy of staying away from the, I'm just gonna call it like Agli, I'm gonna call it Agli, okay? Cause I can't do this. Blue has a policy of staying away from the Agli boys. Known as the Raven boys, they can only mean trouble. But Blue is drawn to Gansey in a way she can't entirely explain. He has it all, family money, good looks, devoted friends, but he's looking for much more than that. He's on a quest that has encompassed three other Raven boys. Adam, the scholarship student who resents all the privilege around him. Ronan, the fierce soul who ranges from anger to despair and may or may not drive a BMW. And Noah, the tactern watcher of the four, who notices many things, but says very little. For as long as she can remember, Blue has been warned that she will cause her true love to die. She never thought this would be a problem, but now, as her life becomes caught up with the strange and sinister world of the Raven Boys, she's not so sure anymore. Yeah, here we go. I'm gonna give it a good old try. I really think it was just like a timing thing. That's why I always advocate for rereading books because sometimes a book will just hit you not at the right moment. But maybe this is my moment. Maybe this is my Raven Boy moment. Here we go. Raven Cycle. Um, wait, let me get my fully charged, ready to go. And let me read you the first line. Blue Sargent had forgotten how many times she'd been told that she would kill her true love. Her family traded in predictions. These predictions tended, however, to run towards the non-specific. Things like, something terrible will happen to you today. It might involve the number six. But this was not what Blue was told. Again and again, she had her fingers spread wide, her palm examined, her cards plucked from the velvet edge decks, and spread across the fuzz of a family friend's living room carpet. All the women came to the same conclusion, blunt and inexplicably specific. What they all agreed on, in many different clairvoyant languages, was this. If Blue was to kiss her true love, he would die. And off we go. I have coffee. I have a full day. I have bad air quality keeping me inside. I've got air conditioning. Let's go meet the Raven Boys. <laughs> there he is. Okay, only on chapter two, but here's the update. So we have our main girl, Blue, who comes from a family of clairvoyance, but she doesn't seem to have any talent that's really one that she can use. She just happens to be able to amplify the clairvoyant talents of those around her. So that's why she always goes with her mom to the church every year, because without Blue's presence, her mom cannot communicate with the dead. And so the dead that they see at the church every year are the souls that are going to die within the next 12 months. So her mom like takes notes. And if anybody has requested it of her, 
she will tell them if their soul or their loved one's soul has passed by. But this year is different because instead of her mom coming, it is her aunt Neve. And Neve is a little kooky. And Neve has let Blue know that this is going to be the year that Blue falls in love. Blue has had 10 years since she got her prophecy. Um, she's had 10 years to convince herself that she's just not going to fall in love. She doesn't, not going to do it. Um, so when Neve says that, she's like, mm, okay, Neve. But this year at the church with Neve, there's one ghost that will not speak back to Neve. She, they like ask like, what's your name? What's your name? What? And then like write it down. One ghost would not talk to Neve. And so Neve is like, Blue, can you see this guy? And Neve is like, actually, yeah, what the fuck? And she's like, why don't you go, go get his name, please. She gets his name. His name is Gansey. And the story is kind of coming back to me as I'm reading this. The next chapter, we find out who Gansey is in real life. He is one of the Raven boys, and apparently he had a rough night last night. We don't know if the Gansey that Blue saw, was it the real alive Gansey who was spying on the whole dead thing? It seems like he's very interested in like ley lines and the dead and stuff like that. So was it we saw his real life body and it wasn't a sign that he's going to die in 12 months or did we actually see his spirit and he is going to die in 12 months or both uh oh okay so it was both Gansey was in the parking lot recording and as he's playing it back we hear the conversation that we heard between him and blue so it was his spirit is he gonna die in 12 months 13 14 percent update um, so we have figured out what Gansey's whole deal is. So he has traveled the world. He's got old money. So he's been traveling the world trying to figure out where some of the long lost kings of Wales have gotten to. That means Llewellyn, that means Arthur, and that means Owen Glendower, I believe, who Gansey believes is buried somewhere possibly in Henaretta, which is where they are right now in Virginia and he believes that this king is buried but simply asleep and if he is woken up Gansey will be able to ask him a favor. He has spent a lot of time and money on this and it's an obsession for him and he has roped all of his friends into it, Adam, Noah, and Ronan. And then Blue very nicely the night after seeing Gansey's spirit asked her family like, hey, can I like, should I warn this guy? Would it make a difference? Like, is there any way to stop this like young guy from dying? And her mom said no, but her aunt said, I could look into how he died. So she does this kind of summoning thing where she tries to see how Gansey dies. And it's just like the cable is cut. Like she, she's like, I was following him. And then he just went somewhere that I couldn't see. So mm, anyway, so far, I, I do remember this. I do really like the writing. It's descriptive in a way that I personally really enjoy. I feel like I can see everything really clearly, like specifically Gansey's apartment we just got introduced to. And it's it's so descriptive that like, I felt like I was in the apartment, the way that the books were stacked and like what books were there and the way that the bed was unmade. Like it was just very descriptive. Like the perfect amount of description, I think. Yeah, I really like, I, I really like it so far. And it seems like their Latin teacher, Barrington Welk, was also kind of obsessed with the same thing that Gansey is now obsessed with. Him and his best friend, Cerny. But I have a feeling that he's dead. Or I could just actually read this. But uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that his, his friend died or something like that. And Welk is still obsessed. So that's interesting because Adam mentioned he felt like he was being followed. So, Welk, pretty sure this is gonna be messy. This is gonna be messy. <laughs> oh no, so Blue works at the pizzeria that the boys decide to go to one night and Gansey goes up to her and is like, hey, Adam, my friend thinks that you're really cute but won't talk to you, so will you come over and talk to him and I guess she like doesn't recognize Gansey. I don't know exactly why but she's kind of into Adam just by like 
looking across the pizzeria at him. So like I said, I have a feeling the mess is gonna be messy and I am here for it. Okay, deepest apologies for uh, my laundry machine in the background, but we have just learned that Gansey is going to try and do some kind of ritual that will heighten the power of the ley lines and he will be able to follow them easier and wake up his king. Next chapter, we hear about Welk, who remember had the same obsession that Gansey had and had a friend that died probably because of it. And he just said that he tried a ritual and got him and his friend all fucked up. So again, the mess is yet to come. I'm only at 25%. I'm still really enjoying it. It's funny, I can't remember why I didn't like, why I didn't like it. You know, again, always give books a second try. And then Gansey also has a meeting with the quote unquote psychic. He does not know that it's Blue's mother, um, but him and the boys have a meeting with a psychic tomorrow, I think. So that will certainly be interesting. <laughs> Yeah, 38% update. First of all, we learned that Adam, his father is abusive and Gansey is trying to get him to move into Gansey's apartment, but Adam doesn't like to take what he considers to be handouts. So there's that. But now we just had their meeting um, with Blue's mom and her mom's friends and Blue was there and it was a little chaotic. I really like the family, like the ladies of the house um i really enjoy them and i believe welk i think he was supposed to be welk also came to the to get a reading like right before the boys did and the mom was like get the fuck out of my house they like did the cards and looked at it and they were like you're searching for something and then all of a sudden blue's mom was just like get out never darken my doorstep again if you see him in the future blue turn around and run, like bad news about Welk. And then the boys just straight up are like, hey, we, we don't really care about our futures. We wanted to know about the ley lines. And again, Blue's mom is like, nope, we're not talking about this. Then she forbids Blue from ever seeing Gansey. And, and she compares Gansey to Blue being hit by a bus. She's like, if you hang out with him, it's just like stepping in front of a bus. So, and then anyway, I think I forgot to mention that he left his precious journal that he's always writing in. He left that at Blue's workplace. And so Blue has it, but didn't give it back to him. <laughs> also something I do remember as well, Ronan has adopted and is now the father of a baby raven that he cares for very much. And her name is Chainsaw. <laughs> Okay, so we don't know exactly what Gansey wants to ask for when he gets Glendower, um, but we know that Welk wants to control the ley line because he was kind of interested in the ley lines as a hobby before, but then his family, he lost all of his fortune and all of his power and he really is resentful about that. And so when that happened, that's when he got serious and he's like, we're gonna find this ley line and then I'm gonna grant, I'm gonna get control of it. And he says something, I, I don't know why, but this line kind of hit me. He has a friend who just is like content to follow him around. He doesn't really have ambition according to Welk. He's like, his friend was a sheep, but sometimes he slipped and remembered him as loyal instead. And I think that's so, I don't know why that felt so sad to me. Like you can either picture a loyal friend as someone who is loyal to you or as someone who mindlessly follows you. I wonder which one his friend really was. But yeah, Welk is just a um, piece of, piece of crap. Piece of crap. Oh my goodness, where did I last leave you? 55% update. Blue has decided to help the boys. So she goes off with Adam, Ronan, and Gansey. And Gansey's sister just happens to own and know how to fly her own helicopter. So they're like flying over the city to try to get a bird's eye view of the ley line. And Blue helps them because they all know about her amplification power. As they're flying, she like points out where to go and they notice this like raven pattern 
from the air. So they land and they start to check it out. They find this weird magical glen. The clocks, all the, their watches all stop. And then there's this tree with a hole in it. And if you crawl into it and close your eyes, you see some Thing, a vision. We don't know if it's the real future, it, what it is. Whatever Adam sees, he's like really torn up about it and feels really guilty and he's like, I would never, I would never do that to you. But we don't know what he saw. Blue sees her and Gansey re like crying and holding each other and being like, it's gonna be okay. And then Gansey telling Blue to kiss him and Blue wants to, but remember if she kisses some like her true love he will die. So what? And then Gansey goes in and when he comes out, he says that he saw Glendower. He saw the Raven King. So I'm really liking it so far. I don't know why I didn't like it. I also think that I'm 50% of the way through. It's a lot of character building. We're 50% of the way through and the gang, this is like their first time getting together. She's taking her time, making sure that we understand like the family lives and the kind of intricacies of each character, which sometimes doesn't work. But I think for this one, I have a feeling that like the actual characters are a little bit more important than the story. I'm enjoying it. I'm gonna try and fit like the whole, all four books into this video, but this is already getting quite long. So I'm going to try and give you an update. I'm gonna try and work all the way to 75% before I talk to you again. So see you whenever that may be. It's taking me a while. I've been reading for about five hours, but like I've also done laundry and cleaned the house and gotten lunch and stuff like that. So I probably won't finish this tonight, but I'll catch you guys at the next update. Aha, okay, so the twist that I remember is that Noah is a ghost. Noah is dead. So I knew that from the, the beginning. That's the one thing that I remembered. However, I did not remember that Noah is the dead friend of Welk. They just found his body. And then Gansey ran home and was like, Noah, get out here. Um, we've got some questions for you. But I could have sworn that the boys knew. I didn't realize that the boys were that dumb that they didn't realize that Noah like doesn't go to school and doesn't eat. Oh man, all right. 75% update as promised. Wow, so like I told you, they found Noah's body and they obviously reported it to the police because they found a dead body in the woods. So for a brief period of time, Noah kind of goes missing because they moved his body. Like we don't know exactly why, but like he just kind of became even less of a person for a bit, but now it seems like he's kind of coming back and Blue helps him because she lets him like feed off of her energy, whatever. It was some kind of holiday, whatever. They had the day off of school. Gansey goes to visit his parents because it's his mom's birthday. So he's MIA. As he's driving home, his car breaks down. And as he's getting out to like look at the engine, whatever, Mr. Welk shows up with a gun. And he's basically like, I have nothing else to lose. Like after seven years, they found Noah's body, which means that somebody must be sneaking around where like we were doing our ritual and it's gotta be you guys. So he was like, give me the book give me your journal, and then I'm gonna kill you. Ugh. Somehow, Gansey's able to knock the gun out of his hand and make a getaway, but now Welk is like gone off the deep end and he doesn't have anything else to lose because pretty soon they're gonna trace Noah's death somehow back to him. Told you there'd be mess. Oh my god, duh, but sorry, I forgot to say that Gansey, the reason he's obsessed with Glendower, we finally understand this, but I totally forgot to tell you. So he is extremely allergic to bees and wasps and hornets and all of the like, and he one day got stung by like a hundred. He like kicked a hornet's nest or something. As he was dying, he heard this voice that said something like, you're saved because of Glendower. And because there's someone who's dying right now on the ley line who isn't supposed to, 
we're going to let you live even though you're not supposed to kind of like a life for a life kind of thing and the person who was dying but wasn't supposed to was noah he died while gansey was like supposed to be dying so they kind of like swapped and that's how he first heard glendower and how he got obsessed so he's been searching for like seven years and that's that i forgot to mention that but yeah cool <laughs> Your BMW is forgiven, Ronan. Uh, it was so obviously coming, but it doesn't make it hurt any less. It's basically a race to see who can open the ley line first, awaken the ley line, because whoever awakens it will be kind of favored by whatever powers there may be. Gansey didn't want to hurt anybody because the ritual has always left either Noah dead or like other people hurt. So he didn't want anybody to get involved, but Adam went ahead to do it himself. And then Welk was there and there was a scuffle and then Gansey and everybody showed up and he just throws himself in the middle of the pentagram and sacrifices himself. Okay, okay, so weird shit is going down. Adam is like maybe immortal. We don't really know what's going on, but anyway, he made the sacrifice and then like a shit ton of strange animals pop out of the woods. So Ronan, Blue, and Gansey have to duck for cover and they accidentally end up in the tree that shows you visions. And Blue has another vision of like her and Gansey wishing they could kiss each other and she just like watches it she's like okay this is something that i have to see but gansey gets a glimpse literally just like a second of a blue and gansey moment and he literally throws himself out of the tree <laughs> he's like nope and with that, my friends, book one is done. So, oh my God, what even happened? What I didn't mention is that Neve kidnapped Welk, actually. He, she told him that she was gonna help him because he had actually called her a long time ago to ask for help with the ley lines and she said no. She calls him back and is like, hey, I'm gonna help you with the ley lines. Tricks him and it's actually gonna use him as a sacrifice so that she can wake up the ley lines. He somehow gets out of his ties ties neve up and then they accidentally run into adam scuffle blah 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 during the scuffle neve just disappears and it turns out that the other ladies blue's mom and her friends knew that neve was up to something weird and so they like moved she had these magical mirrors and they like moved her mirrors around and somehow that made her disappear and they thought it would just disable her magic but she like is now lost and so that's something a story for another time during the stampede that blue and the boys jumped out of the way for welk was killed he was trampled to death and gansey gets all pissed at adam for like not saving him but like welk killed their friend and was planning on killing all of them as well so like i'm kind of on adam's side adam was like i didn't actively kill him i just didn't save him and like sort of on adam's side here the trees who, by the way, speak Latin, <laughs> the trees of the magical place told Gansey that they think they have his king. And then we fast forward a little bit, Noah has a proper burial, a funeral, but then they just dig him up a couple seconds later so that they can put his body back on the ley line and Noah's back. So yay, hooray, Noah is back with the fam. Adam, it's unclear, but it says like Ronan helped Adam move his stuff to a, like a different apartment kind of thing. And I don't know if that means that Adam is like alive. Is he a ghost? Like what's Adam's deal? That's not explained. And then just to like end on a confusing note, they like are all really happy to see Noah. Everyone's giving him hugs, whatever. And then Ronan just says, I guess now would be a good time to tell you, I took Chainsaw out of my dreams. So Chainsaw's his pet bird, remember? And the next book in this cycle is called The Dream Thieves. So I have a feeling that Ronan has some kind of weird magical power because the first time that they went to the magical place, the trees who speak Latin. We're very pleased to see Blue and Ronan specifically, whatever that may mean. Also, Blue's, the identity of Blue's father has been unknown the entire time. And then her mom is just like, yeah, it's about time I told you. 
Um, I think we like did a ritual and we freed him from the magical place. Is he from our dimension? <laughs> I don't like what time period is this man from anyway they had a short but fruitful relationship which ended with blue being born and then she thinks that something about blue's birth was like another ritual that sent him back to like whatever dimension he came from and she would like to get him back <sighs> I reading this over I don't know why I didn't like it like it has everything that I like about a book. I think maybe I was just reading really fast paced books perhaps, or like at the time I was reading books that had more world building, like other than this is very much just happening. It's an urban fantasy. It's just taking place in an American town, right? So I think maybe I was looking for, I don't know. I don't know what my deal was. I really enjoyed it and I'm going to try not to read the second one now because I've read too much today and I need to take a break. But I will see you guys when I start The Dream Thieves. Bye! <laughs> Hello, um, it's pouring outside. If you hear drip drops, it's pouring. Okay, so it's been a, a day and a half. <sighs> who, I just wanna know, who was she? The girl who read The Raven Boys and didn't like it. Like, who was she? I don't no i am on i'm 40 percent of the way through <clears throat> the dream thieves and i would like to take this time to make a formal apology to ronan lynch for calling him a troubled teen with a pet bird because while it is true that's not all he is so my deepest sincerest apologies to Ronan and the entire Lynch family, okay? So, um, yeah, I will say though, I understand why some people wouldn't like these books before I dive into everything that's happened because we're 180 pages into the second book and there really hasn't been, there's been set up. I think that that's what these books do because it happened in Raven Boys as well. There's like so much set up and then the last quarter of the book is like, bam, action. I have a feeling this is what's gonna happen here. It works for me, it might not work for other people, but I think that's why we get so much character building and why my friends talk about the characters as if they are real people that they know in their lives. It's because you do, you get just so much character, um, relationship building in here. Um, this one also is much more from Ronan's point of view, which I think is nice. So I took notes as I was reading and let's see if I can interpret them for you, okay? So what has happened so far in The Dream Thieves? We, um, we ended the first book with Ronan telling us that he can take things out of dreams like Chainsaw, his pet bird. And so this book dives into that much more. So Ronan and his father are able to take things out of their dreams. They don't really have a lot of control over it, but that is something that they do. We later end up going to Ronan's house and he points out like, yeah, magical toaster, doesn't plug into the wall. They never had to pay for electricity, these people. Anyway, so that's a thing that happens. Instead of that just being like, oh, that's an interesting thing, um, we are introduced to a new character called simply the Gray Man or Mr. Gray. And he is a hitman hired by someone named Green, Green something, it doesn't matter. Anyway, he is hired to find something called the Gray Warren, which is a mystical object that allows people to do the thing that Ronan and his father do. He somehow tracks down the Lynch family, beats up Declan and is like, you better get me that thing or like, I'm gonna hurt your brothers, I'm gonna hurt your mom, blah, 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 blah. This is also going to get messy, I guarantee you, because the gray man also showed up at Blue's house to talk to 
her mom and the other psychic women and there's like a little spark like a little flirtatious thing going on between blue's mom and the gray man okay it's gonna get messy cabe's water the magical forest where adam made his sacrifice gone like as if it never existed we don't know what's up with adam neither does adam to be fair um he <laughs> he made the sacrifice and so far nothing's happened but like i'm pretty sure something's happening because he's just so tired and he starts to see things out of the corner of his eye that he can't quite explain and he he's getting like weird deja vu and stuff like that so that's a bridge we haven't crossed yet also he is living in an apartment like in a church and he got his rent cut surprise like yay haha ha. suddenly his rent dropped the exact same amount that his tuition got raised and he of course is like fucking gansy always giving me these like quote unquote gifts that i don't want to accept but it was ronan ah uh, that's all i'm gonna say about that ronan fixed his rent so that he could continue going to school um, <clears throat> speaking of Ronan, he accidentally brought a nightmare creature out of his dreams that he and Gansey had to kill. So that's fun. And then I am, I am slowly but surely falling in love with Gansey because he made a reference to Babe. He said, that'll do, pig. That'll do. And I was just like, well, I have no choice now but to love this boy. I refuse whenever they talk about what Gansey is wearing I black out. I ref top side no. These I am traumatized. The way that he dresses, the polos, the salmon, the pastels, the boat shoes is the kind of guys I went to high uh to college with. Mm -hmm. Which brings me to my next point, which is are these boys all Republicans? Because they keep talking about don't forget to wear your red tie, wear your red tie. They're rich, I mean, they're rich as hell and they live in Virginia. So I would not, like, they're old money. I would not be surprised. But the amount of times they're talking about red ties, I'm like, guys. So anyway, that's what's going on. Again, not a lot has happened. We're just getting a lot of set up. Right now, Gray Man is heading to Gansey's house and Gansey is taking everybody out. He, like, got a camper van and they're gonna go somewhere i don't know but yeah that's what's going on and blue is kind of con she, blue is like not super we haven't really had a lot from her point of view in this book she's a little bit absent this is definitely a series about the boys like it's about loving these boys um just so we're clear but um blue is very much like scared of adam adam also showed like he kind of has the same anger issues that his dad might have and like he's working on it but like he like threw something he he just got like this crazy burst of anger when talking to blue and so now they're kind of like walking on eggshells around each other um and every time gansey talks blue is like taking the temperature of the room she's like do i love him Mm, no. Anyway, yeah, that's that's what I'm doing. I'm breezing through this. Um, I will probably finish this later today. I'm gonna finish my snacks and I'll catch you guys later. But yeah, oh my god, the the response when I posted that I had finished the Raven Boys, the response on my Instagram was glorious and I'm I'm excited for more. I'm happy that you guys are happy that I'm reading it, um, and yeah. If you see whoever past me was, if you see her on the street, ask her if she is okay, okay? Um, but anyway, yeah, I'll update you later. Bye. Hello, hello, hi. So if you hear something in the background, I am making something in the air fryer. Ignore it. I finished the book last night. I kind of thought that I wasn't going to and then I just couldn't stop reading. I am done with the dream thieves. I'm gonna go into what happened, but I think it was a very interesting 
sequel there was action there was plot things got resolved i feel like we moved a step forward but not by a lot and it kind of focused like i said it had a lot more ronin focus so it felt quite different from the Raven Boys, which I thought Ronan was sort of a mystery character. So I wonder as it continues, are we going to have kind of each character followed more closely? I thought that Raven Boys seemed to introduce everybody equally, but this was just very Ronan heavy. But let me... I took so many notes and there were so many times where I wanted to whip out my camera and scream, Kurt was home and like I try to, I don't know, be chill. Like he got home from work, he was tired and me screaming like, a ghost just kissed Blue might not have might have ruined the vibe you know so but yes that's my first note so when i last left you i had already started but here are here are my notes really quickly run down just in case you need a refresher as to what happened in the dream thieves gansey and adam go off to one of his mom's like campaign trail parties she's a politician so adam gansey gone ronan also gone he's off doing weird shit which i'll touch on in a second so blue is just kind of lonely and noah's like why don't you come over hang out so they hang out just like friends and they're sort of just laying around the house when blue tells noah about her curse or not curse but like how she if she kisses her true love he will die so noah's like well there's one boy you can't kill here because he's already dead yeah they they like attempt at first and it's really awkward so they're like laughing about it it's kind of it's like a weird but like it was kind of sweet but then noah was like no 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 you gotta like picture picture a scene from the movies like don't think about kissing me you know and she uh pictured gansey so that's a thing um so yeah blue has been kissed we learn that ronan's mom not just his toaster but his mother was from a dream um so when his dad died everything that he had dreamt kind of dies with him so his mom is like in a coma so we're like the cows like everything in his house is like in a coma adam is acting very just strange throughout the whole book he yells at blue a little bit more um and she finally is like listen like it's not gonna happen you don't even need to worry about why i'm not gonna kiss you because i don't want to kiss you and either way you wouldn't die because you aren't my true love it's not gonna be you adam so that's done after that though they do a ritual to fix adam and this is where i think persephone is going to be a bigger player in the series yeah so he's like feeling a little better but like definitely odd kavinsky i haven't talked about kavinsky but ronan has this like arch enemy but it feels like a little crush on this complete weirdo from new jersey why did he have to be from new jersey i would just like to say but he is just this big troublemaker he's like the local drug dealer forgery guy you know turns out he is also a dreamer and so we get a long portion of the book of him like training ronin of how to control this power of his and we find out that their like dream thievery is actually draining the ley line and draining cave's water of its power so that's the reason why the forest kind of disappeared and stuff like that is because kavinsky is crazy and made a hundred mitsubishis in a dream so now we have to work on how do we stop kavinsky from making all of his mitsubishis i mentioned gray man who's trying to find gray warren when he finds out it's not an object but a person he's like "Ooh, killing sure kidnapping uh, i don't feel really good about that so he decides to leave ronan and kavinsky alone he admits to killing ronan's dad and blue's mom is just like fine with that like blue's mom anyway so yeah they date they date that's a thing. There's a big battle. Kavinsky is just a little bit unhinged and he wants to fight Ronan to the death. And so he brings out, he dreams up some dragon. Ronan brings out his nightmare creature, which may or may not just be him, you know, the darkness in Ronan. So they fight. Um, Kavinsky dies. So no more Mitsubishi's problem solved. Problem solved. Blue's mom is now missing and she left a note that says Glendower is underground and so am I. So I assume we're going to be finding her 
Um, and then they take Ronan's mom to the to Capes Water, and she wakes up because she is a thing of dreams, and like that is the source of their dreams. So she's alive and able to say like, "Hi, love ya," kind of thing. Um, and also, he was able to talk to his dad in a dream, and that was like. I guess nice I don't know that's what happened so my notes at 1 a.m. was felt a little like an interlude people might argue that this could have been shorter and yeah <laughs> so yeah I do think like this is definitely a book that not a lot happened but I'm I didn't love it that much especially just like the all the Kavinsky stuff I was just I don't love reading about super self-destructive characters um, and this book was all about self-sabotage, basically. Um, so it wasn't a book that I loved, but I do appreciate the amount of time that we were given to understand these characters. Also, Adam very clearly said that he wants to get to Glendower first and ask the favor. And Gansey is sort of like, but this was my whole thing. Like, this was my thing. I'm gonna ask him the question or the favor and Adam's like I mean finders keepers man so now it's maybe a race with Adam I don't know they also had a moment where um Gansey and Blue had a moment and they both like know that they've got feelings and they agreed that they don't want to do anything to hurt Adam so they had like a hug cheek romantic cheek press moment and they decided that was it they'll leave it there walk away so i'm very excited blue lily lily blue is the shortest book it's in the 300 page range so i'm i'm interested a lot of people said they liked the third book the most so i'm just very excited i'm loving the atmosphere and that's kind of partially why i'm also not like taking breaks to talk to you guys is because i'm just in it i'm in it um so yeah i'm gonna eat my lunch and I'm gonna dive right in. Off we go. Okay, Blue's mom has been missing for a month, um, but it turns out she is in a cave where time may or may not exist. Um, so when at the very end of the last book, we went back to cave, Cave's Water? Why did I just suddenly blank on the name? We went back to the forest and where there used to be like a little pond, now there is just this cave and doesn't seem like good news, but apparently Blue's mom went in there to go and find Blue's father. Um, and we keep getting this vision from all POVs of three sleepers and you should not wake up the third one, whatever that means. But anyway, the gang's back together and they're gonna go explore the cave. These poor boys, curse of the Latin teachers, man. So what has happened so far? Not much. Gansey's kooky old friend, Mallory, who he calls a lot, um, came to visit and he's now living with the boys and he's just this elderly man. But they got a new Latin teacher to replace Welk, who remember tried to kill all of them. And it is none other than Green Mantle, who is the man who hired the hitman. He's their new Latin teacher. And he's apparently like really handsome. And also Blue just figured out how to, Noah has been kind of like losing it. And Blue figured out how to like turn off the fact that she is an amplifier she can like snap be like my energy and i'm i'm breezing through this i mean this like i said this was the shortest one i'm already 22 percent of the way through i've officially reached the part of reading a series where you start to procrastinate because you don't want it to end so i have not i have not read i mean i literally am doing anything else but reading right now um so i'm not gonna finish it today for sure but i feel like it's a good thing but mm. okay hi post blue lily lily blue what happened in this book so i will say i'm surprised how many people told me <clears throat> that this was the best book i disagree this was very much similar to the dream thieves where not a lot of action happened but we get a lot of just kind of character growth um, I think that this book, if I were to pinpoint it, I definitely think we saw a lot more of Adam if we were to have the Dream Thieves be Ronan's book. I think that this was much more an Adam and Blue book. Yeah, I wasn't in love with it. Um, I'm sort of at the point now where I'm like, I just want to get 
to the ending like I just want to know I'm getting a little bit impatient and I found that there were in this book in particular there were a lot of new characters introduced or characters that were just like briefly in the story like we had Jesse who guards the cave we had Green Mantle and his wife Piper and then her two muscle men we had Mallory showing up. There were a lot of points that weren't focused on the Raven Boys in Blue, and I find that I'm really only enjoying the parts that have the Raven Boys in Blue. So yeah, this wasn't my favorite, but I'm hoping that this was just kind of like, it set us up. The boys have had their fights. Now they have like realized that they totally don't know each other, but what they do know, they love and they, I think, are stronger for it. Everybody came out of Blue Lily Lily Blue stronger than they were. So let me, let me just look at my notes, okay? These are nonsensical. I wrote down that she's always mentioning people's teeth. Yeah, the Lynch family, the amount of times we have heard about Ronan's teeth and Niall's teeth, I don't know. But then she also said the gray man has fantastic teeth. And at one point, Adam said something about how he had good teeth. Like, it, it's just like, what's with the teeth, Maggie? I'm not gonna go into all the details of like Jesse and blah, 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 blah. Anyway, they get into the cave. They find a woman who is Gwenlian, who is Glendower's daughter. And she has like been awake in the cave for 600 years. So she's a little cuckoo. So she's around. And we basically are just trying to find ways into the cave to find Glendower. Like that's kind of the whole book. During this time Persephone dies. She was like scrying or something and she just died. I just wrote so much shit goes down in the cave. Basically at the end there's this whole thing where they're all running in and there's like Piper and the Grey Man and Green Mantle and Adam and Gansey get separated from the group in this giant cavern of bones and <sighs> I don't know, we find mom and dad. Like it was just, it, it was one of, again, that thing of like nothing really happens and then everything happens in the last 10% of the book. Um, but in this case, I was just more confused and like it was just this standoff of like toxic adults with guns. And I was just kind of like, get out of here so my boys and my girl can do the thing, please. So didn't love the ending of that and then, um, Neve in the epilogue, Neve comes back because of course she does. We knew she was gonna come back. Wakes Piper up because the gray man knocked her out, didn't kill her, and they left her for dead in the cave and Piper wakes up and Neve is like, hey, do you wanna get, like wanna wake up the king and get the favor with me? And Piper's like, yeah, that sounds great. And Neve is like, okay, we have to touch him at the same time. And Piper just goes, and touches him first. So now Piper maybe gets the favor. But yeah, I don't know. This book, um, I found myself reading it just because I wanted, I want to finish the story. For Dream Thieves, I thought it had a lot of stuff that like maybe I didn't particularly enjoy, but we got so much character growth and relationship growth and everything. This one, felt a little choppy just because there was so much going on and it was like a hundred pages shorter than all the other books. I'm, I am excited for the Raven King. What are my predictions? Do I have any? No, I can't even, I, like while I'm reading the book, I'm like, oh my God, Ronan is the Raven King. But then sometimes I'm not sure, but then maybe Gansey is, but then I, I don't know. Um, so yeah, I'm just interested because Gansey wants to use the favor to bring Noah back, but everybody else wants to use the favor to bring Gansey back because everybody knows that Gansey's gonna die except for Gansey. So yeah, I'm I'm just excited. What, where's, my Kindle's not around, but I think this is the longest book, The Raven King. So I'm going to start that uh, either tonight or tomorrow and I will get back to you, but it's almost done guys. We're almost done. I will say I do like the growth of Adam in this book a lot. Um, even though it's still confusing. Uh, and I still love the atmosphere. It's just, I'm, we've had three books of a lot of character and relationship. And I would like now to just, I want there to be peace, okay? And I want Blue to get any scholarship she wants to any school that she wants. And that's the end of it. Bye. Hi guys. I'm having a rough time. I'm having a rough time. I was going, thank God. I got my coffee in a to-go cup because 
I thought I was going to sit in a cafe and read The Raven King, start The Raven King. And I read the prologue and I was like, I need to be alone for this one. So I took a break. Like I said previously, I am at the stage in a series that I'm enjoying it so much that I am doing everything within my power to not end it. And that meant taking a break. So I read Blue Lily Lily Blue, and then I ended up reading Immortal Longings by Chloe Gong. It's okay. But now I'm here. I've taken a two and a half day break, and I'm ready to end this thing. Um, however, I can't believe I'm so dumb. So you know how I said that everyone except for Gansey knows that he's gonna die? The prologue of the Raven King reminds me that Gansey is not just some dumb boy. We know from the first book, he knew why he was at the church, right? Like he knew that there was something funky going on. And then he heard his name on the recording. So our not dumb Gansey put that together. And he knows that like, well, if he heard his voice, he was probably part of the souls that are walking and thus he's gonna die in a year. So he said, even then a small part of Gansey suspected what hearing his own name really meant. He knew it probably by the time his friends came to his car's rescue an hour later. He knew it probably when the psychics at 300 Fox Way read a tarot card for him. He knew it probably when he retold the entire story to Roger Mallory in person. Gansey knew whose voices whispered along the ley line on St. Mark's Eve. But he'd spent several years chaining his fears and wasn't ready to unhook their leashes just yet. It wasn't until one of the psychics at 300 Foxway died, until death became a real thing once more, that Gansey couldn't deny the truth any longer. He was a king, and this was the year he was going to die. No! Okay, so I'm having a rough time. The second I read that, I was like, mm-mm. -mm. I gotta be in my house. I gotta be alone for this. They were also playing like, if you guys know K-pop, they were playing like Troublemaker. It was just not the vibe. So I'm here in my quiet house and I'm gonna watch Gansey die and I'm gonna watch someone fucking save him. Okay? Here we go. a 26 percent update breezing through this this oh i love this writing it reminds me a lot of like i'll have to wait till the end of this series but it kind of reminds me a bit of how i felt when i was reading ninth house and hellbent ninth house was a little bit more confused like this i can follow i understand what's going on but it's very much like you've just got to go with it we're at the point right now where by the fourth book the kind of line differentiating dream from reality everyone's concept of time is very warped and confused and the writing really reflects that like you don't completely understand what's going on but it's like i couldn't it's sort of like I couldn't tell you the details of what's happening, but I feel, I know what's happening. Does that make sense? I'm loving the writing in this. It's just so mm, atmospheric and bizarre. And I just read, there's a scene where Adam is like in a bathroom and he's looking in the mirror and like his eyes start to twitch. Freaky as hell, like it's just, it's really good. Um, and once again, like nothing so far has really happened other than Ronan has taken his, accidentally kind of taken the orphan girl out of his dreams. So whenever he dreams, there's always this one girl in there and she always wants to be taken out and he never has, but oopsie daisies, he did this time. And so there's that. Um, Blue has talked to her family and has decided that she's gonna tell Gansey about his death that he seems to kind of already know about. Um, and did I mention that Matthew is also a dream person? Ronan's little brother is a dream person because that's a thing. Seems like if any of the Raven boys are gonna die, it's gonna be, well, I mean, he's already dead, but like, I think Noah's gonna be gone. And I, they, oh! 
they have to find a way to save Gansey. Like, I just, I don't know. But also Blue has talked about how much she wants to get out of Henrietta and explore and travel the world. But And like Gansey's whole thing is he never wants to leave Henrietta. So it's like, what is happening? What is happening is what I want to know. But I'm, I just wanted to pop in and say that I love the writing style in this, specifically in this book. I feel like the, f the first, especially like the two middle books were, like I said, a little bit of a mess, but like gave me so much understanding of these characters that now going into this one and we have this very dreamlike plot going on, I'm so connected to these characters. If the first book had been written like this, I think I would have liked it, but not understood it and been like, okay, what's going on? But because I have such a strong understanding of all of these characters, I'm willing to go on this strange, almost like hallucination feeling plot because I love these characters so much and I get it and I know that we're gonna get, it's all gonna tie up in the end. So, yes, <laughs> uh, here we go. <laughs> what? 50% update, my hair's insane, I'm sorry. When I'm reading, I'm always like doing weird stuff with my hair. 50% update, um, Noah is being controlled by something else. So he attacks Blue, Blue almost loses her eye. Um, Gansey and Blue have told everybody they're in love. Uh, I don't believe they have actually said the word love, but everybody knows. What else? Declan has been, continuing his dad's job of dealing magical artifacts. And one of his buyers happens to be the mother of Henry, who is this weird figure. He's another student and he's like really trying to become BFFs with Gansey. And he's just a little bit of an oddball, but like maybe he's nice, we don't really know. But his mom made him go to this school basically to like keep an eye on Gansey and the gang. So Henry has sort of been like, listen, I just want you to know that like, this is why I'm initially why I was around you, but now I like you and I would like to be friends. So there's that. What else? Has anything else really happened? No. There are these weird flashbacks and like, where are the moms? Or where's where are the women in the family? Like there's just stuff going on that I like can't fully explain but I trust will be explained he Ronan didn't create Cave's Water but he like brought it kind of back to life made it a physical space in their dimension that they can access Ronan is fully like we knew it but Ronan is fully obsessed with the word love has never been thrown around but like obsessed with worshipping Adam. His feelings are similar to an oil spill in an ocean that is simply waiting for a match. Um, and it seems like Adam knows, but like they're just kind of tiptoeing around this because they're both weird as hell. Piper killed Green Mantle. Here's the thing, I know that that's all gonna come into play. Like all of these characters like Green Mantle and Sundok, the mother of Henry, um, and then these triplets that I forget their names, but they are all dealers of magical objects and they're all descending upon Henrietta in order to, who knows what, get the king, get the, whatever the fuck. I know that they're all going to come into play. They already have come into play, but like, I'm just so invested in the boys and blue finding the king that anything else, I'm just like, can we not? Like anytime Piper shows up on the page, I'm just like, can we skip all of this? That's what's going on. So. Okay, fuck no. Now there's like this demon thing that is what, uh, what's her name? Piper woke up. <clears throat> and he is the, the demon is like the unmaker. So it unmakes everything. And it's like the dreamer it would unmake last. Is it gonna kill Ronan? Are we gonna get down to, are we gonna have to decide between Gansey and Noah and Ronan? And I just, I'm stressed and I'm at 66%. <sighs> 
Hi. My phone won't stand up by itself. Stand up. Okay. Um, I'm at 68% or something. I had to stop. I think I'm at 71%. Whatever it is, it's the exact amount where I know when I see that 70% mark, I can read the last 30% of a book in one sitting, no problem. So Kurt is going to be home for dinner in 20 minutes and that's not enough time for me to like finish the book and have all the emotions. So I'm going to wait for us to like eat. Like I usually read later at night, like usually from like nine, nine o'clock to midnight is my reading time. Um, so I'll see you guys in a little bit. I can't believe it's almost over. I don't even know what's really going on at this point. All of the crazy people are descending on Henrietta and trying to get, I don't even know. And then Piper's fucking so, uh, once again, I'm not really sure what's going on, but I'm loving it. And I, it's 9 30 checking in finished the book what do i have to say i'm i'm sad i'm sad that the book is over did i love the ending no i think it went by a little too quickly so i forget where exactly i left you off but basically the only way to stop the demon that was unmaking everything was for someone to willingly die and gansey was like yep guess that's me and so he dies but then they're like maybe we can convince capes water to give up its life like could it be the sacrifice and so Cabe's water kind of unmakes itself in order to remake gansey i just yeah, I, it tied up everything, uh, mostly everything. So I'm fine with that. I just think that for as, maybe it's just because I didn't want it to end that I don't like it as much, but I just think that the way that the action went was quite quick and I would have actually liked to have seen Gansey wake up or I'm not sure, but it, I, I just felt like the ending was a little bit rushed. The weight of emotions I was expecting to feel, I didn't cry, which was very shocking, but I still stand by, I will say that this was my favorite book of the four. Is this gonna be controversial? I think it would go Raven Boys, Raven King, Dream Thieves, blue lily 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 blue maybe i don't know about raven king or raven boys might be tied but yeah i get it now i get it like i do feel like i know these characters in real life i would love to see this adapted i think they could do an amazing job adapting this i don't know i'm feeling kind of just like bummed that i'm done i know that there's a lot of novellas so i will i'll save those for later though i don't want to like use up all my Raven Boy world content in one go, but I read it, I get it now. I loved everything that happened. I loved how it was all tied up, but I just wish it was written a little bit differently. I wish we had a little more time to like sit with each scary thing. Anyway, yeah, it is done. It is done. And um, I cannot believe I'm going to go to sleep now. I'm going to attempt to and Thank God for the sponsor of this video. Shout out again to Endel because I'm going to need some help calming the hell down before I can go to sleep. Um, once again, there's a link in the description box or there's this QR code right here. The first 100 people to use it will get a week free trial of Endel. Um, once again, it's for focusing, relaxing, sleeping. Uh, in this case, I need a little help sleeping tonight for sure because my brain is just going real fast um yeah so thank you again to Endel for sponsoring information down below but whew, thank you to everybody for not letting it go for pushing me to read this book this series I do still stand by if a book didn't hit the first time and it was just kind of meh maybe give it another read I don't know who who I was <laughs> when I when I read it the first time and I was just like me 
you know? I get it. It definitely like plot wise wasn't the strongest or wasn't necessarily my favorite plot, but I just really loved the characters and the feeling and the writing style, especially in the final book. I'm with you. So anyway, that was the Raven cycle. That was a full week of my life and I feel not happy about not being able to read these books. <laughs> like, I'm so sad that I'm done, um, but I'm so happy for the experience. Th this book truly was like, maybe it was, you know, what was it? It's the friends you make along the way. It truly was. So, okay, I'll catch you guys later. Thank you always. <laughs> I'll I'll see ya. I'll see ya. Bye. <laughs>